Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays, The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. I almost want a third Azazel run in a row, just to say, haha, variants. Oh my god. This is actually getting to the point where it's comical. Um, 91ALQPAJ. Look, I'm not gonna say to you that this is not ridiculous, but the longer that this goes on for, the more hilarious it becomes. I should probably just have, like, a day where I publish all three of these videos. And I go, you know what? Today's fucking Azazel day uh, of, for Isaac. It's not because of my own, you know, wherewithal or anything like that. We just... I mean, let's think of the odds here. What are the odds of getting the same character three times in a row in, in Isaac? Uh, trying to think. Are there... 11 characters in Isaac now? 9? Let's just let's just say that it's 11, all right? It doesn't matter what character you get first for the purposes of our demonstration here, but then you got to get 1 out of 11 and 1 out of 11. So you're looking at a 1 in 121 chance there if my math is correct. Specifically for it to be 1 in or to, for it to be a Zazel twice or three times in a row, if that was what you were looking for, is 1 in 121 times 1 over 11 again. So it's like a 0 .008, or sorry, 0.08% chance or something. Look, my math, uh, specifically with results of, or with respect to that decimal, may have been off. But what I'm getting at is that it's under a uh, one in a thousand chance to get Azazel three times in a row. And Azazel, you know, maybe that is meaningful because it's probably the character that you're least excited to see as a viewer. But you know what? Check this shit out right here. We dark Judas now. We are no longer Azazel, and as a result, quit your belly aching. We just turned ourselves into a version of Azazel that is uh, twice as much damage and still has the ability to fly. All right, I feel a little bit better about the situation now. It all, it really did come to the point where I was like, shit, dude. I, I would love to random Azazel one more time again on top of what we've already had because it would just be ridiculous, you know? It really illustrates the nature of, uh, of randomness. That randomness is, you know, about as likely as to give you this character as any other individual character. And sometimes, you know, that can clump together and lead to hilarious or, you know, disgusting situations like this, depending on what your perspective is. Uh, I think we're done with this floor, honestly. And it, it only took us two minutes, but we got the ability to fly, doubled our damage, went to both item rooms. We got... I mean, what did we get? Oh, the one the first item room was Mom's Bra. I was looking at the item tracker and I was like, what? Why don't we have uh Why don't we have uh, more items over there? But we got Iron Bar, Placenta was from a boss, active item was the pony, active item was um was uh Mom's Bra. So that explains why we've only got two items in the item tracker, despite picking up like six items on that floor. Or four items, five items on that floor, I guess. Yeah. Alright, we'll use our fool card as such. I'm less concerned with the idea of teleporting out of boss rush on this run because it should be fairly reasonable uh, for us to just do boss rush or maybe ignore it. This could also be a good opportunity for a, a hush run, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves uh, just yet here. That felt like a second secret room to me, but clearly I was mistaken in that assumption, and that's okay. Try to use the pony's active effect whenever possible. What are we looking for on this run? Well, as with all Azazel runs uh, recently, HP is an issue. Unlike all other Azazel runs recently, what is not an issue is our range. Uh, we are pretty much okay on that because we're no longer Azazel, we're, we're Dark Judas, and I'm genuinely extremely glad that we were able to make that distinction early so that this didn't just turn into another run where I just charge up my shot and, you know, destroy every single room, but also occasionally find myself at, at risk of death that I probably should not be at. Now we're getting, like, I'm not a math nerd in the sense that I'm like, hey, you know, have you guys solved the Fermi Theorem? No, it's, I mean, the Fermi Paradox is the Fermi Theorem. I don't know what I'm talking about, okay? So, but I do appreciate... I'm kind of a statistics nerd, and I appreciate the the low odds of having randomed any given character character two times in a row after you already random them once uh, to start... Pardon me, to start with. Um, this is, is kind of tickling that side of me. Not in an I love science, here's a picture of the Crab Nebula, plus an inspiring quotation that says, you know, follow your heart, and if you miss, you'll always land amongst the stars. Um, I'm, I'm talking from a, a a fractional multiplication standpoint here. I like doing 1 over 11 squared in my head. Ladies. 
You know what? That should be the kind of thing that that the opposite sex finds attractive, man. That's a that's an appreciable skill in the real world, and it also indicates a level of passion about something, you know? The the ugliest thing is dispassion. And I think that's, you know. In high school, the coolest kid is the kid who doesn't care about anything. And that's like how you become the lamest adult of all time. Hey, uh, what do you think about um, our kid going to private school? Uh, I think it would be really good for them to get a, a firm foothold in uh, the sciences at an early age that could give them a leg up on competition in a competitive job market with an increasingly skilled population. I don't care. Oh, take me. Moriarty. I don't know why I had to name that guy Moriarty. I wanted to choose a name that wouldn't offend anybody out there, I suppose. Um, head of Krampus versus the Pony. Keep riding that pony. Let's, uh... Let's go straight down to Compton here. That didn't really work. I still haven't seen straight out of Compton. Because I guess I didn't fly during a period when straight out of Compton was on... The in-flight movies? I missed my window. Kate and I see movies so late that they actually do oftentimes end up being on the airplane by... Well, I shouldn't say the airplane. It makes it sound like I'm 100 years old. Um, but they're on airplanes a week after we watch them. And that comes from experience. Like a week and a half ago... Well, probably like two weeks ago, I guess now. We saw Deadpool at, uh, at our local theater that gets movies relatively late. Uh... Because it's close, and that's that's why we saw it there. That's not why we waited, but um, on the flight home from my familial town, about three days ago, Deadpool was on there, and I was like, "Man, we could have just saved some money, watched it on the airplane." That's a thought you never want to have when it comes to you know your movie going experience. I'm glad we saw it on the big screen. Sure, it was a it was a fun movie going experience. I had a good time, but at the same time. Is there any experience like watching an action movie on a uh, three and a half inch screen reclined at 65 degrees because the five foot one person in front of you complains that they don't have enough freaking leg room even though this is designed for people that are of average height, statistical deviation, you know, blah, blah. All right. Do we stick with Guppy's head or do you go with the pony? I really like having the ability to fly um, even though it's, it's active. And it's kind of inhibiting us from taking other stuff. I think I'm going to take Guppy's head and, and just relish the extra damage, I guess, that we could have this early. And we're fast enough that it doesn't feel like we're giving up too much up in the process here. So we'll take the blue map. We'll take our nickel. And we will, uh, I guess, go to our secret rooms. We're still making great time. I mean, we are done with the third floor. Okay. We are done with the third floor, is what I said. Is it worth a bomb... To get shielded tears. I think yes. Is it worth two bombs to get shielded tears and whatever money we get here? I'm going to say yes. And we actually got back up to 16 cents. Not that we're going to do anything with that on this floor. We could go back and buy that spirit heart. I don't think we need it. We shouldn't need it. Let's put it that way. But um, at this point, I'd really like to increase our rate of fire. Or pick up something like brimstone. So that shielded tears uh, becomes more of a, uh, a blessing than a curse. It probably should start as more than a blessing than a curse, but uh, it can definitely get even more so in that direction uh, if we just get the right kind of subset of items here. And I'll take Bloody Penny because now if we spawn an arcade on this floor, we've got a great chance to get something out of it, and there is an arcade. Let's come in here, play this. Grab the penny. Grab the penny. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> my, uh, my mistake, thinking that would actually work out well for us there. Liberty Cab. I don't know. I mean, that room seems awesome for placing bombs. We should probably consider just doing that um, until they're out of mushrooms in there. Because we're getting, like, th at least four mushrooms with every bomb. Ah, I shouldn't have stood there. Uh, at least four mushrooms with every bomb. And as a result, uh, a pretty good chance to get mini mush or a good pill or, God forbid, magic mush. And, and really start to pop off on this run. But things are going to be a little tougher before they get easier, I think. We're really looking for... Well, the, the curse room not requiring us to spend HP is kind of a vote of confidence for how we can get a little further on this run. Uh, in, uh, in all logic. In all logic? That doesn't really make sense as far as sentences go, but that's okay. Uh, we'll bomb our way in there and see if we can get our second guppy item. If we manage to... Alright, disregard. You know what? I'm going to give you... 
until I get down to two keys. I'm gonna give you until you get down to one key. Oh, you dirty dog. You're gonna make me do it. Oh, oh, I'm gonna, I'm coming back for you. And yeah, you are not gonna like the fury that I'm gonna bring down upon you. You know what? I, I'm gonna try it. I would not recommend it at present. Range down, bit of a buzz kill. Bombs are key. That would not matter at all. Why would you be excited about that? All right, um, fairly suboptimal series of events has just befallen us. Uh, largely my own fault. That was a, a a risky situation, and I did not get a proportional benefit out of it. Basically, just wasted five keys. Yo, Afterbirth Plus. This is the first mod I'm gonna make for Afterbirth Plus. Okay, key beggars should have a a more. I, I hesitate to say should. This is why you should always trust me as, like, if I ever get into politics. Because I admit that I'm wrong in more situations than I'm even wrong in. Even though I may be stubborn from time to time. I'm, what I will say is it's a different game philosophy. For me, I would like to have it so the key beggars are worth playing, or at least worth considering playing, more than in the situation where you have skeleton key or, at the very least, you know, uh, flat penny. Right now, you never want to play Key Beggars. They do have a decent pool of items. Like, they can give you Attack Fly, which is pretty good. Um, they can give you Chests, which is really nice on the chest as well. But I think they should be more likely to pay out faster, in my opinion. That That's something that I would like as a little bit of a balance tweak, if possible. Uh, tears up, Shot Speed down. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, that's, you know, because... In the song, yeah, featuring Lil John and Usher, Usher, Usher. He says, peace up, A-Town down. I don't know why he wants Atlanta to go down. I thought that was, like, his city of choice, but, you know, that's up to him. I I really dislike the song, yeah, by Usher, which is not to say it's not a banging club hit that gets people out of their seats, because it is. But I hate that he subverts your expectations in the song. He says you're, you know, ready for anything, because from a 1 to 10, she's a certified 20. As soon as we establish the range that our scale exists within, you can't go and just say she's double the absolute maximum value. It, does, it just blows it out, man. It means that I don't, you, I'm starting to think that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, Usher. You know, on a scale from 1 to 10, she's a 500. I have no conception of, of if we can go above 10, and she's a 20, there could be 500s. There could be people who are 3 millions on that scale because you can't be trusted to maintain your upper bounds. If you said she's a 10, I'd be like, oh, okay, she's in, you know, the top 1% or something of, uh, depending on how you establish your scale, either logarithmically or just linearly, um, she's, uh, she's in the top 1% or the top 10% of physical attractiveness in the world. I'd say, damn, Usher, good, good on you, man, go for it. When you say she's a 20, that could be, you know, the bottom 99%. I got no idea. You just, this is why we have rules, Usher. So that we can exist within them. Alright, our HP is pretty bad. And we're on Necropolis. Not really making great time uh, either. Not not bad time. We're still a little ahead of schedule. And the Daddy Long Legs pickup is, is quite nice. But uh, I gotta admit, I, I fear for this run right now. Pretty fly. That's a good start. Okay. Start to start to eke something out here. We ran out of keys, unfortunately, on the last floor. I don't know how that happened. Must have been uh, uh, must have been a low amount of key drops on that floor. I and mean, it's not like I wasted five of them for uh, effectively absolutely no reason or anything like that. Uh, no problem. But the run is okay. What is scary about this is that there's been a lot of active items. Oh fuck. Well, I guess we are already done with that room from a, a bonus standpoint anyway. But. Um, we have, we have eight items, and we're on the fifth floor. This is, like, really, really below average. Now, a lot of it is because there's been active items that have shown up on this run, but that's also indicative of, of our run maybe being a little slower than we'd like it to be, for sure. So, I'm a little skeptical, but it... Like, our DPS is high enough that we should be in a relatively okay situation. Obviously, I should not have stood there. You don't need to tell me that. I could have told you that. Probably save your uh, your question mark card for a better situation. Because, uh, you know, getting six flies out of it doesn't seem that strong. 
But maybe we'll find a, uh, like if we find a satanic bible, then we can get three satanic bible uh, demon hearts out of it as opposed to just getting the one. So I think that this is advisable. We actually may be able to be persuaded to go for satanic bible as our long term item, depending on how things look on this run. But yeah, definitely remember earlier when I was like, I'm not worried about teleporting out of boss rush because I'm just going to do boss rush. I did say we'd have to see how the rest of the run went, but as of right now, the rest of the run is not looking like it's a fantastic situation for me to be saying that. Alright, we've been in... We've been everywhere, man, except for in the down direction. Doesn't really fly there, that's okay. Alright, another dead end. I hate you, Curse of the Unknown. Just, that's the ticket, right? You just stick to the left wall. We really need to try to, uh... Well, let's see what this pill is. We really need to try to, um... Go to this curse room, but we need to try to get a deal with the devil as well. So that's I Found Pills, which is... Not worth risking any damage for. I'd like to come back there and go to the curse room, because we do have a... A reasonable line of play that includes some guppy, uh... Transformations in our future, but... It's not going to be easy to swing it with the relatively low amount of HP that we've gotten so far. What would be ideal for us would actually be a deal with the devil, two items, one of them's nine lives. I'm not going to be picky about the other one. Perfect amount of HP to take an item and then get nine lives. Nine lives gives us a little bit of extra defense and perhaps equally importantly uh, contributes to a guppy transformation which would be very, very uh, useful for us right now. And we get whatever the free item would be on our deal with the devil. That would be, that would be like the number one... And fairly likely situation that I would love to see here, but, uh, you know, we're never going to know. Or we're not going to know if that's actually how things are going to work out for a little little extra time here. We got no bombs, otherwise we would be blowing up those rocks, and that looks to be a secret room in all likelihood there. That was such bad damage. I 100% I should have been able to dodge that. So we might have squandered our deal with the devil chance. We also got mom's pad from our item room. And looky, looky, no, uh... No spirit hearts from our shop, so life continues to kind of give me some lemons here. We're, we're not making lemonade, we're making like a, you know, perhaps some kind of like antibacterial soap or something with the lemons right now. I'd really like to make lemonade. I'm parched. I'm in the desert. I need some, uh, I need some, need some water and some sugar to maintain my homeostatic fluid balance. You got me. You got me. That's not what I wanted, but I'll take it. Oh, we got the mom transformation. Bombs are key. Not great, but... It, it could be worse, I guess. Um, let's look for a second secret room. That could be very valuable, actually. I don't think it c can even be there, but... Here, we give it a shot. Alright, the bloat is a... Uh, is a bit of a scary play here. I'm actually going to use our... Question mark card, which only gave me three flies, which as far as I'm concerned is bullshit. I thought it gave, it, gave you double your active effect. Apparently not. Oh, he shot in the wrong direction. Please have mercy. The game does not have mercy. It gives us one HP, and we head down to the next floor with Isaac starting HP. Much better than Isaac starting damage, but Isaac starting HP is not uh, where you want to be at the present moment in time. I would say probably don't get your hopes up about doing boss rush here. I'm kind of tempted to go to the curse room uh, and, and say fuck the deal with the devil. My, my reasoning is... I have a pretty good suspicion that we're probably going to take damage anyway. Why not do it on our own terms and possibly get a good benefit out of it? Did we get a good benefit out of it? Eh, it's not... I mean, it, it was good. It sucks that we lost the highest percentage chance at a deal with the devil to make it happen, but... Uh, I think it was... We positioned ourselves aggressively here, at least. If we get a deal with the devil, the same logic from the last floor applies. I mean, two guppy items is the, is the dream, but... One guppy item being nine lives, and then anything else would be awesome. Hell, one guppy item being nine lives, and no other items would be awesome. Hell, one item in there being guppy's tail would be a start, man. The tower. This is not very good. But it could be disproportionately beneficial for us if we're able to um, use it... Oh, my God. On a room with a lot of skulls? Obviously, we need a, a key, or possibly even more than one. Well, we found our second secret room, at least, as a result of this. I really don't want to fight Mom right away. We do have more HP than we've had in a while. It's just a regular secret room. 
and telepills. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so this is actually a huge play for us. We got Red Mom, which is annoying, but if we position ourselves appropriately, and that was not appropriate there, but if we position ourselves appropriately, we might be able to get the foot to step on the knife, and if we do that, then we're getting more damage than we deserve to get, if I'm being honest, but it's, it's a wicked game we play here. I'm not sure if we're getting that value on a regular basis, and you know what? I'm not sure that I'm displeased about that to begin with. Um, just there you go. That one might have been good. It's almost over. Hasn't even shot at me, which is really nice. No deal with the devil, man. I mean, I guess I brought it on myself. SMB Superfan, Sacrificial Dagger, Gimpy. This is actually a very tough choice. I'm almost thinking Sack Dagger. But Gimpy can be really valuable as well to keep us alive. And SMB Superfan is okay, but... You know what? I'm going Sack Dagger on this. I'm following my heart, and even if I miss, I'm going to land amongst the stars. It's a it's a big risk. Would not uh, take issue with you suggesting that this is a large risk that I'm taking here. But I think SMB Superfan is like, you know, your boat's going under, and you're, you're it, it's going into the drink. You know, it's leaking. You got a hole in it. And you're like, hey, let's plug that with a piece of chewing gum. Or just so you know, the water pressure is going to build up. There's going to be leaks elsewhere. Whereas Sacrificial Dagger is like, let's try to swim. You know, if you, it, it gives you a pretty high percentage chance to, to drown. However, uh, you're definitely going to drown if you stay in the if you stay in the boat and keep trying to plug the holes. So I think this gives us our best shot at a a logical way out. As as ridiculous as my analogy is, I think it holds. Now, if you guys could just come down here, thank you, Daddy Long Legs. Feel free to step on our last remaining enemies. A bomb. I really just want one key. <laughs> I don't even care about getting to the uh, the shop. As nice as it would be, good. There you go, one key. So we can get to our item room at least. This should be fine, just be careful. Very slow. Well, what's our way out on this run now? What's our logical, um, what's our recourse? How do we make this happen? Uh, honestly, as much as I hate to say it, I think you just play well. Oh, that's the worst start possible there. I think you just play well. And that's, it's very simple. More HP is not gonna hurt. Uh, it's very simple, but at the same time, it's difficult to do. It's simple to understand, easy to say, difficult to put into practice, but... I'm... I'm feeling a little bit more hopeful about our odds than I was uh, recently. Where was our boss fight? We found it super early, right? Along with that telepills. We went to the curse room. And I think it was like over here and up. And then up. And then definitely not that way. I was just trying to test your knowledge. So it's right, yeah, to the right and then down. And there's the item room. One more below us. Two more below us. That's a uh, range down. It's worth holding, I guess, to see if we get PhD. Holy shit, it's Tech X. Okay. Is all forgiven? Close to it, honestly, because with Shielded Tears and Tech X, this sets us up very, very nicely for the future. The Guppy Dream would still be beautiful if we could do it, but uh, the, odds of, uh, the odds of it happening are fairly low. It's another range down pill, hilariously enough. I don't know, range down might be good with Tech X. I don't think it is, but it's one of those weird items that can have kind of like uh, counterintuitive synergies like that. Is it worth going over there for a remote detonator and a and, uh, couple of Joker cards? I, I don't think so. I'd be surprised. Don't think it's worth doing that either. But I'll admit, there's kind of a bounty of riches over there. The Tech X pickup... Let me put it this way. If I'd been able to get into that item room and know that I have Tech X, I probably would have gone with Gimpy. Or SMB super fan, but probably Gimpy over uh, over Sack Dagger. I really took Sack Dagger because I thought that first off, it sounds like an Australian actor from the 1980s. But the other one is that uh, I thought that it was going to be our primary source of damage, and I wasn't optimistic about that. But I was at least realistic about it to the point where I was like, "Hey, if we gotta kill enemies late in the game, Sack Dagger is capable of doing that. Sack Dagger is capable of doing that." Look, I'm just relishing that for right now, as a white person, I can do accents of any other white person, and it's not offensive. You see it all the time. People bust out like an Italian accent. They'd be like, oh, hey, uh, I'm from Rome. Oh, you're from Rome. Uh, spaghetti pizza, Neapolitan ice cream. And you're like, somehow that's not offensive. But if I was going to do a, um, 
you know, a Japanese accent, it would come across as very offensive. And I'm not saying it shouldn't be offensive. I'm just saying that they should all be offensive, you know, if you're imitating another culture, it shouldn't depend on the color of your skin necessarily. But I guess, I, Rob is Italian, and I say, Rob, do you not have a problem with people doing an accent? Uh, and he says, you know what? It's been a long time since Italians were, uh, were really, uh, the, the target of persecution in America. He's okay with it. I'm not saying it's okay, I'm just saying he's okay with it. And I'm relishing the opportunity while it lasts to, uh, to make fun of him like that, I guess. Although, looking inwards, perhaps it's not the nicest thing to do. We have Dark Bum now. Dark Bum is going to be, uh, pretty great for us. I think because of the fact primarily that, well, first off, we have, uh, the HP need. So already there's a need for this item, but then we have Bloody Penny. Which should allow us to pick up a decent amount of red hearts. Those red hearts can be converted pretty easily into spirit hearts. You know, Bob's your uncle. We're, uh, we're rolling here. This, this curse room scares me. It scares me because it, it calls a, a victory into question. Where it doesn't need to be into question. Like, as of right now, this run is good enough. That we don't need to become guppy. And we're far enough away from becoming guppy that... I don't consider it absurdly likely that it's uh, bound to happen here, but certainly it's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy by not going into the uh, by not going into the uh, curse room. We're making it even less likely that we become guppy. Uh, we got battery charges. Okay, you know what? We'll probably pick up the equivalent of a spirit heart for being in here. Oh, uh, you gave me a spider instead. Duh, that's a funny joke. Still, um, worth worth. Spending the keys to get into that room. And we got a key out of it. Are we going to fight Hush on this run? No! I know I said earlier that that could be a possibility. I keep doing the old bait and switch there. And you keep falling for it. No, I, I really thought that, you know, all other things being equal, it seemed like a semi-decent chance to happen. And then all of a sudden, we kind of found ourselves fighting for our lives here. Which is not the expected outcome when you get uh, Dark Judas on, like, the second floor. First, well, it was an XL floor. Not guppy items, so I feel a uh, renewed conviction in my decision to not really go hard on that guppy dream. As much as I would love for it to have a chance to happen. So the real thing with Tech X, oftentimes I forget about is you gotta spam shots if you wanna get max value out of it. Max value does not sound like a, uh, an Australian actor from the 1980s. That sounds like it's, he's like a Swiss actor from the 1980s. You know, it could be like Dolph Lundgren's post-Rocky 4 career but pre-expendables. It would be like Dolph Lundgren and Max Value. Either that or Max Value would be like the nerdy actor. It'd be like, well, according to my uh, computer programs, uh, I've hacked into the Ministry of National Defense in 15 seconds and uh, all the nuclear warheads are on their way to Kyrgyzstan right now. And then Sack Dagger says, All right, Max Value, thank you so much. You're, you're right, Sheila, for your... That's, you see? Like, it's okay for me to do the Australian accent right now. I'm gonna relish it. And in time, people will look at these videos in like 2035, and they'll be like, Whoa! I can't believe people did that back then. And they had no self-awareness. See, that's the joke, is that I do have some self-awareness about it. Five runes. This one wants to double your chess. Well, that's what I said now. This one likes to listen to Fortet. Burkano. Hagalaz. What was the other one? Yera. Oh, uh, I think I'll probably roll with the Yera rune. Thank you very much. We'll use that on the chest. Hopefully, we'll get enough keys necessary to actually, like, you know, do something with it. But we are definitely in a situation. Ah. We're definitely in a situation where we have, uh,. A chance, and a fairly good chance, I would say, at uh, at victory here. The real ticket is going to be on the next floor. Because I think we're pretty much set on this floor. The real ticket is going to be on the next floor not taking, you know, ridiculous amounts of damage uh, through the rooms that we're going through. And there's going to be a lot of rooms to go through. So, unless we get an Emperor card right off the bat. Which is actually very nice with the Yara rune. Because, you know, we just use Yara right away. Alrighty. Here we go. Our third Azazel run in a row. Yera. And I say top left. Attack fly, $3 bill. That's not too bad. Not quite Beelzebub, apparently, but still. 
Three dollar bill is uh, not the most amazing item in the game, but it can give you some of the most amazing tier effects in the game. It's just a little okay. It's just a little uh, uncertain, I guess. I prefer certainty in my Isaac items. Well, that's not true. I usually prefer uncertainty in my Isaac items. But from strictly like, are we going to win the run standpoints? Yeah, sure. Certainty's nice. Yeah, don't walk through the creep. I know you had the ability to fly previously on this run. Maybe I didn't walk through the creep. Maybe I just shielded a bomb twice. I definitely shielded the bomb once. Oh, this is the good stuff right here. Tech X homing tears, man. That was lovely. Let's go back. Start opening top right now. Or bottom right. That's fine, too. We actually got Eden's Blessing out of it, so I'm happier for it. It's going to raise our rate of fire, which is really just leading to larger and larger tiers at this point. Um, and also... Next run, we're going to start with an item, which is nice. It's been a while since I've had Eden's Blessing, to the best of my memory, at least. We used to get it all the time. Might as well check and see if that's a Joker card. Dude, the homing tiers are so good. Chaos basically guarantees us uh, a kill on... Ooh, we got 2020, I think. Basically guarantees us a kill on Blue Baby if we get there with, like, the ability to get hit once without dying. It lowers our ceiling, uh for success quite a lot. Great stuff. This could be our boss fight just coming up over the ridge here. I'm not going to go back and use that other key um, because it's a long walk, man. If we have to backtrack, then absolutely. But if we don't, then I'm not going to sweat it too much. Chariot, not really interested. This is looking increasingly like it's not the boss room, although maybe it's all the way over here, strangely enough. Like, these are good. These have already met up, starting in the next room. And then maybe up or to the right? But it's a weird placement for our, uh... It's a weird placement for our second secret room. I think you gotta give me that one. Not this way. I would love the HP, though. Alright. Lard is gonna slow us down, but that's not too bad. Chaos, Joker, two of spades. Two of spades is fine. Joker is... Yeah, okay, we'll take the mark. There's no reason to take uh, Horror of Babylon here. Come on, give me some golden chests so I don't feel bad about leaving those other ones behind. The mark worked out fantastically for us here. Well, you know what? You're getting your wish. Looks like we're going to have to backtrack, so sure, you lucky so-and-sos. Get a little bit more Isaac content here. We Oh, that's our third one. So that's going to be six total chests opened. So we're already, we're in the money once we start opening these up. Uh, pardon me? Okay, this might be horrible, but I'm glad I took it. Uh, it might be awesome too. It might be shit, but it might be like pretty good. Here's what I'm thinking. We come back here, start cracking this, cracking that, cracking this, pack it up, pack it in, let me begin. We're gonna go uh, use our bomb to find the secret room. Fight Super Greed. Get a good feel for how we look here. Reroll all of our stats for no reason other than to possibly fuck up a winning run. Seems like our rate of fire is ridiculous now. Maybe our luck went up too, because Dark Bum is like... He's, he seems pretty stoked to be a part of the party right now. We're exceptionally slow. But we're firing fast, and that's what's more meaningful in this situation, I think. What do you got for me? Okay, this actually was our room, so I was closer than I than I knew, than I even knew. Let's come down here. I'm just gonna stand here, and if things go terribly wrong, we'll use chaos. But that was an interesting run. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you did, click the like button. Upside a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.